This is section 4.7, Applied Optimization. In this video, we're going to go through an example problem that's really similar to number 29 in your book. And as we solve this problem, we're also going to go through a flowchart of how to approach these types of problems. So the question tells us that a poster of area 320 centimeters squared has blank margins of 5 centimeters on the top and bottom and 4, to 4 centimeters on both sides. And it's asking us to find the dimensions that maximize the printed area. All right, so first step with these types of problems is to always draw a picture. So we have some poster, and we're told that the margins on the top and bottom are five centimeters, and the margins on both sides are four centimeters. And there's printed area in the middle here. Um, all right, so we drew our picture. Step two is we want to come up with equations. So remember, what are they actually asking us? They're asking us to find dimensions that maximize the printed area, that maximize this area here in the middle. Well, OK, so let's see what information they gave us. We know that the area of the entire thing is 320 centimeters squared. We don't know the area of the inside, though. But let's go ahead and write an equation for this inside area. So let's label this part L for our length and this side W for our width. And we'll say that the area that we want to optimize is equal to L minus 10, because it's minus the um, blank margins, right? So L minus 10 times W minus 8, because remember, there's margins on both sides. So W minus 8. OK, so here's our area that we want to optimize. And remember, when we're talking about optimization, we eventually want to take the derivative of this equation and solve for the maximum value. But as my equation is now, I have too many variables. Um, I wouldn't be able to take the derivative and solve for one of these variables because I have three. So what I'll need to do instead is come up with a second equation of a set relationship between my length and width so that I can solve for one of my variables, plug it back into this function, and then have a function written in terms of only two variables. So let's see what other information they told me. Well, they told me that the area of the entire thing is 320 centimeters squared. So I can write that as my second equation and say that 320 centimeters squared is equal to the entire length times width. From here, I can just solve for one of my variables. Let's solve for w. And I have 320 over l is equal to w. Now I can plug this w into here. And I'll have an equation in terms of only two variables. So now my function becomes the area is equal to L minus 10 times 320 over L minus 8. OK, good stuff. We have an equation. Let's fill in our flow chart. So step one was draw a picture. Step two, come up with an equation. And for these types of problems, you'll always have at least two equations. One equation is our objective one. That's the one that we want to take the derivative of the one that we want to either maximize or minimize. And our second equation is some set relationship between our variables so that we can solve for one and plug it into our objective function. So that's called our constant equation. OK, so we have our objective equation. We've written in terms of only one variable. Before we take the derivative, let's multiply this out to make our math a little bit easier. So when I multiply this out, I get I need to FOIL it. So I get 320 minus 8L minus 3200. Uh, 3, I'm going to move this L to the top. L to the minus 1 plus 80. OK, here's my equation. Now I'm going to take the derivative of it. A prime is equal to, this becomes 0, minus 8. Uh, bring my negative to the front. So plus 3200L to the negative 2. And plus 80, that becomes 0 as well. All right, so I have my derivative. Remember, in order to maximize an equation with my derivative, um, I'm going to need to find the critical points. So, and to find the critical points, I set the derivative equal to 0. So I take this function, set it equal to 0, and solve for my variable L. When I solve for L, um, let's see, I can add this over to the other side, and this becomes 8 is equal to 3,200. I'm going to bring this back down to the bottom over L squared. Multiply L squared over. Get 8L squared is equal to 3,200. 
divide by 8, um, and I get 400 equals L squared. And when you take the square root, you get that L is equal to 20 centimeters. All right, good stuff, almost there. So we solved for our L value, but we first want to verify that this is a maximum. We don't want to solve for the minimum value. So remember, there's a couple of different ways how we can uh, verify that this is the maximum value of this function. One way that we could do it is we could take the second derivative of this function and plug this value in and see if it's positive or negative. So let's do that. I'm going to change colors. So now my second derivative is uh, negative 8. That becomes 0. Here I bring the negative exponent down, and this will become negative 6400 L to the minus 3, or just negative 6400 over L cubed. All right, if I were to plug in my 20 here, it doesn't matter what this number actually is because some negative divided by some positive. So that means that F double prime of 20 is going to be negative. And remember, whenever for a second derivative test, if we plug in our critical point to the second derivative and we get a negative value, that means that this is a maximum. So good. <laughs> That's what we wanted. So we solved for L equals 20 as our critical point. We verified that it was a maximum, and it was. So now we're going to go ahead and solve for our other variable, W. In order to do that, I'm going to go back here to my set relationship, plug in the L that I have, and just uh, simplify in order to get W. So now this becomes 320 over 20 is equal to W. Um, and then this simplifies down to 16 equals W. So that means that my two dimensions are L equals 16 centimeters and W equals, or sorry, L equals 20 centimeters and W equals 16 centimeters to maximize my printed area. And to just go through this flow chart and to finish filling it out, step one was we drew a picture of the situation and labeled everything that they told us. Step two, we came up with an equation. We actually had to come up with two equations. One equation was the one that we had to optimize, the one that they were asking for the maximum or minimum value of. In this case, they're asking us to maximize the area. So we had an area equation. But we weren't able to take the derivative yet because there are too many variables. So we had to make a constant equation um, of a set relationship between our variables. We did that using the area that they gave us. And with this equation, we solved for one of our variables, plugged it into our objective function, and then rewrote it in terms of just those two variables. Once we had that, we were able to take the derivative and find the critical points by setting it equal to zero. We solved uh, for L when we set it equal to zero, verified that it was the maximum function or maximum value, and then we just solved um, for our other variable. So solve for both L and W. That's the last step. Okay, I hope this, this uh, example was helpful, and I hope this flow chart will also help you on other problems in this section. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sidrich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.